you know guys not so long ago zimbabwe held the elections and as usual I man as usual you know that zanu pf was been accused of rigging the elections as usual zanu pf has been accused of rigging the elections man for such a long time even when mugabe was still around zanu pf has been accused of rigging the elections I man it makes you wonder man why did these people fight colonialists because they said the colonialists were, were taking the rights of zimbabweans away and now they are in charge of zimbabwe they they took the rights of zimbabweans away so these people they they they, they removed ian smith because they said ian smith was, was an oppressor only for them to take charge of the country to oppress their own people they did worse than ian smith did man when ian smith was still the leader of that country man the people of zimbabwe did not leave their own country now under the zanu pf Zimbabweans are scattered all over the world, being treated like second-class citizens, all because they have an evil re regime in Zimbabwe that does not believe in any democratic processes. This is why, a few months ago, when Zimbabwe had the elections, man, the first thing that came to people's minds is that, man, there's no way Munangawa can win the elections. We know how you came into power. You came into power by military coup. There's no way you can win the general elections. You can't. The SADC mission team went to Zimbabwe to check if everything was done right in Zimbabwe because you know these allegations were flying out, there were videos coming out, there were pictures coming out. So the SADC mission team went to Zimbabwe to check if everything was done, was above board. And when they came from Zimbabwe, their preliminary report said that the elections in Zimbabwe, they could not meet the threshold to be recognized as credible elections. This was the preliminary report from the SADC team. The elections in Zimbabwe could not meet the threshold to be recognized as credible elections. This was the preliminary report. So the investigations were still going forward. While the investigations were still going forward, Mnangagwa, the leader of ZANU-PF, inaugurated himself as the president of Zimbabwe. Before the SADC mission team finished the investigations, Mnangagwa inaugurated himself as the president of Zimbabwe. Many African presidents said, man, we are not attending that event. That event is a joke. We cannot attend an event where someone is going to inaugurate himself while the SADC team is still doing the investigations. Why don't you wait for the SADC team to finish the investigations so that they can say, okay, you are a legitimate president, you can take power. No, he did not wait for that. He inaugurated himself while the investigations were still going forward. So many African presidents said, no, man, we are not going to that event. The one president that went to that event, it was President Ramaphosa. <laughs> You remember how angry South Africans were at President Ramaphosa? You remember how Zimbabweans, men Zimbabweans were furious at President Ramaphosa for endorsing Munangagwa after he was accused of rigging the elections. Ramaphosa went to Zimbabwe to endorse Munangagwa. He went to his inauguration with Fikin Mbalula, telling us that the relationship between the ANC and ZANU-PF will never be broken, man. The relationship that, like, like, between ANC and ZANU-PF is like this. It will never be broken. This is what the ANC was doing. And I think at the time, South Africans were not really paying attention because at the time, ZANU-PF really needed the ANC. ZANU-PF really needed a strong ally who says, man, we are going to support you. No matter what, man, these people, they can write all their reports. We don't care about the reports. We don't care about the democratic processes. We don't care. We are going to support you still. People did not pay attention at the time. Because the first thing that came to my mind was if... Ramaphosa and the ANC can go and support ZANU-PF knowing very well that ZANU-PF is under the investigations of being of rigging the elections. If the ANC can go to Zimbabwe to support these people while they inaugurated themselves, while the investigations were still going, will the ANC step down when they are kicked out of the, of the power in 2024? If the ANC goes to Zimbabwe to support ZANU-PF knowing exactly what ZANU-PF has been accused of, Will the ANC step out of power in 2024? Don't you think that is a scary thought? The fact that our president went to Zimbabwe man, to, to support someone who was accused of rigging the elections. And this person, man, the preliminary report of the SADC team said the elections in Zimbabwe could not meet the threshold to be recognized as credible elections. Ramaphosa and ANC, they did not wait until the, until the investigations were done. No, they did not wait. They went to Zimbabwe still to support ZANU-PF, knowing exactly what ZANU-PF has been accused of. So my question to you guys, will the ANC step out of power if they are voted out in 2024? Will the ANC simply 
step out of the way and allow an elected party to take charge of South Africa? Do you really think the ANC will do that? What are your thoughts? I really honestly don't know, but I'm inclined to agree that I, I think the ANC will step down. And this being Friday, I'm going to give one reason for it. Or no, two reasons for it. The and the other thing, while well, I still remember, man, you, you remember recently Sam Kilomaseko when he did that interview with the ANC spokesperson Mashen Gimutiri about that company that the ANC owes, you know, that company that did the banners for the African National Congress in 2019, the, the, the company that is demanding 100 million from the African National Congress. One thing that Mutiri said in the interview of the SABC, he said that African National Congress is not beholden to the constitutional rule. African National Congress is not beholden to the constitutional rule. So if the spokesperson of the African National Congress can go into public and say the African National Congress is not beholden to the constitutional rule, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Because you think about the fact that the ANC supports ZANU-PF, ANC openly supported ZANU-PF, knowing very well what ZANU-PF was accused of. The African National Congress right now, they signed a contract with a company to make their banners and election material in 2019. They did not pay that guy since 2019. Those guys, they want 100 million from the African National Congress. The courts are saying, the ANC, you have a binding contract with these people. You must pay these people. You must pay them. And the ANC says, no, we are not beholden to the constitutional rule. So what is the ANC beholden to? If they are not beholden to the constitutional rule, what is the ANC beholden to? Do you people honestly think that it is going to be a smooth ride? This conversation, when I remember we've been having it with my friends for some time, and people are underestimating it. People are underestimating the ANC. At the end of the day, man, these guys, these guys are a liberation movement. These guys are not just a political party. These guys are a liberation movement. They are not different from ZANU-PF. At some point, the people of Zimbabwe said, man, we are sick and tired of ZANU-PF. We want an alternative from the ZANU-PF. Then they saw the real colors of the, of the ZANU-PF. Then ZANU-PF said, no, we are not going anywhere. Mugabe said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm instructing all my military guys. I'm instructing everyone in government, everyone in the military. We are not going anywhere. ZANU-PF is not going anywhere. We don't care if the people of ZANU-PF voted against us. We don't care if the people of, of, of Zimbabwe voted against me. They voted Changarai. Man, we don't care. Changarai will never be the president of Zimbabwe. When Zimbabweans were fed up with ZANU-PF and said enough is, is enough, ZANU-PF said no. This is only the beginning. So are we going to see the same thing with the African National Congress in South Africa? Because I'm really worried, guys. I'm worried. I'm worried. These people, they say we are not beholden to the constitutional rule. I'm worried about these guys. These guys, they were boasting about their relationship with ZANU-PF live on national television. After the SADC mission team said that the elections in Zimbabwe could not meet the threshold to be recognized as credible elections, will these people leave, the, will leave, will these people leave power? If they are voted out in 2024, will the African National Congress simply step out and allow a party that is elected to take charge. <laughs> Man. And, and this being Friday, I'm going to give it what? I really honestly don't know, but I'm inclined to agree that I, I think the ANC will step down. And this being Friday, I'm going to give it one reason for it. Or no, two reasons for it. The one is they, the defense force is in the shambles. The police are not great. Um, we have too many people in Parliament who couldn't run up a flight of stairs. Um, I don't think... I think the people who could fly run up a flight of stairs have actually decided to vote for somebody else. Uh, that may or may not be a good thing. It depends on the who, who they vote for. But the reality is, I mean, the party's coming out of our ears. And while that makes for 
really tricky coalition politics. It also is a sign of exactly what you said about the the, 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 the public. And I think it, it goes to the fact that, as sort of Michael said, that the public won't put up with it. And to some extent, it's been reflected in you, the, you know the, the the range of parties we've now got available. So that's that's the one thing. The other thing, let's take it from the crime <laughs> figures. You know, looked there being um, twenty what twenty seven thousand murders in this yeah. country last year. Twenty seven thousand. And the fact is that however disruptive and terrible that uprising was in twenty twenty one. Um, because, I mean, economically, it was, you know, that was probably the real just <clears throat> formed such a small amount of the murders of that year, the number of people actually killed. Um, and I, I know this is like, this is really weird to talk about it in these terms. But, you know, we had this uprising. It clearly was an uprising of sorts. It wasn't spont it wasn't spontaneous. It, it may have developed a bit from it. Um, and the number of people killed... You know, compared to the ability to murder people in their homes over an argument over the soccer or the cricket or the girlfriend or whatever it might be, which is actually the most common place people are murdered, it, it was inconsequential. Um, and I also think there's a third factor, and, and that is unlike almost everywhere in, the, in this continent, the level of independent media presentation, ownership, private, online, offline, is so considerable that I actually think that would act as the ultimate check because no I'm sorry but <laughs> I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to disagree with the lady Mrs. Sarah Gorn. I'm gonna have to disagree with you on a few things first thing Mrs. Sarah said that South Africans will not put up with it I mean South Africa will put up with it if the ANC refuses to leave power South Africans will put up with it they will put up with it. South Africans have put up with all the nonsense that the African National Congress has done to them. So if the African National Congress says, man, these people are trying to, 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 to stage a military coup against us, South Africans are going to put up with it. South Africans have shown you that they don't care about this country. So what happens with politics? South Africans, they don't care about it. They don't. And Mrs. Saragon also mentioned another important thing. You remember when Jacob Zuma was rightly, rightfully, sent to jail in 2021 you remember what happened jacob zuma you guys you still remember what happened when jacob zuma was arrested in 2021 the malls were burned down the malls were burned down there was chaos all over the place and if they did that only for jacob zuma what do you think these people are going to do for the african national congress if people went out and destroyed the malls destroyed infrastructure destroyed people's livelihoods because they wanted to defend Jacob Zuma. What do you think these people are going to do to defend the African National Congress? What do you think the supporters of the African National Congress are going to do to South Africa to defend the African National Congress? Because these people, I mean, when Zuma was arrested, they showed you that we don't care about the laws of this country. We wanted to have special laws for Jacob Zuma and we wanted to have another law for average South Africans. South Africans, average South Africans, went out and protested on behalf of Jacob Zuma, saying that Jacob Zuma must not abide to the laws that we abide to. So if these people can walk out and cause a destruction and kill people's livelihoods, people were killed in those marches. People lost their lives in those marches. To put it into perspectives, people lost their children in those marches. People lost their livelihoods because the malls were burned down. Everything was being bent down. The infrastructure was bent down. People today are unemployed. People, there are hundreds of people now in South Africa that are unemployed because Jacob Zuma was arrested, was rightly and rightfully arrested in 2021. So if people can go out to defend Jacob Zuma like that, what do you guys think people are going to do to defend the African National Congress? And another thing, you said that the media will serve as a check. Man, the media will not serve as a check. If there's one thing that I have realized in South Africa is that the media is working hand-to-hand -hand with the African National Congress. The media in this country, man, is favoring the African National Congress. It's not favoring anybody. The media is favoring the African National Congress. This is why today you have so many people online trying to, to, to tell you things that are different from what the media is telling us. 
The media supports the African National Congress. The media supports the ANC with their open borders. The, the ANC is in charge. The ANC is in charge of the country. They are allowing the borders to be open. Illegal immigrants are coming in. And while, when these illegal immigrants come in, the corporate South Africa says, ha, these are the people to exploit. They hire these people. They get rid of South Africans. Now South Africans are sitting at home. 60% of people, 60% of young people in this country are sitting at home. Most of these people are graduates. They are sitting at home. The companies, the restaurants, the trucking companies, they are hiring illegal foreigners. And when South Africans express their frustrations about that, the media comes and says that South Africans are xenophobic. So to say that the media is going to put a check on the African National Congress, you are completely wrong. Because the media right now is working with African National Congress. The media is working with them. Because there has to be a link between the African National Congress running the country, the borders being open, illegal immigrants coming into the country, illegal immigrants occupying the positions and the jobs that were supposed to be occupied by South Africans and the media calling South Africans xenophobic whenever they try to express their frustrations. So to say that the media is going to, to, to offer a, a, a check, guys, I honestly don't think so. I don't think so. And I'm scared that if these people man, can bend down malls, they can bend down infrastructure, they can destroy. For Jacob Zuma, what do you think these people are going to do for the African National Congress? And, what do, and do you think the media... It is going to, to, to go against the African National Congress. Why would the media go against the African National Congress when big business loves the ANC? Big business loves the ANC because the ANC allows a big business to do whatever they want in South Africa. And the big business is paid and the big business is paying this media. So the media will never go against the African National Congress. It will never. To think the media will go against the ANC, man, it will never. It will never. It's not a going against them right now. The media is going against the people. It's not going against the African National Congress. Nothing. Nothing could be hidden. You know, running a sort of insurrection is a very public thing. Paying a backhander, not so much, as we, as we know. But I, I, just, I just think I, it's not even the quality of our media or the variety of what is available. It is the sheer volume and variety of what is available. And 64 percent click through. I don't believe that the media men will act in the benefit of South Africans. I don't believe so. <laughs> because if the media really loved the South Africans, if the media was really representing the people of this country, the media was the one that would have made sure that South Africans and their frustrations are heard about this whole thing of illegal immigrants. The fact that the media is calling South Africans xenophobic, it shows you the link, man. The link is there between African National Congress. Corporate South Africa and the mainstream media. The link is there. You can see it. Right. It's right in front of your eyes. So to think that the media will go against the African National Congress. Man, if the ANC is voted out of out of power and they say no, we don't want to go out of power. I can tell you today that the ANC and the big business and the media, man, they will be, go into this and they want to fight until the end. They want to fight until the end. Why? Because the big business has to help the African National Congress. The ANC has allowed these guys, the corporate South Africa, to do whatever they want in the country. So the corporate South Africa will have to pay a lot of money to the media to twist the narrative. So if you think the media is going to go against the ANC, no, if the media goes against the ANC, the media goes against the big business. And the media will never go against the big business. <laughs> the media is owned by big business. What do you mean? I think it would help. Right, the, the sort of the infrastructure for police state does not really exist in South Africa, I don't think. Um, it, Michael, what do you make of the fact that, according to the, the IRR's poll, 52% of the ANC supporters, as a majority, think that the ANC would undemocratically try to cling to power? I mean, that's a kind of bizarre thing. It's, it is bizarre. It actually, it's actually rather worrying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite worrying, really, isn't it? And, and one immediately thinks, you know, are these people who perhaps among those who, who think well th that's what we would do we, we would you know it's our historical mission to run the country we we, we won the struggle and um, and if we get defeated it's it's a it's a revolutionary setback um and uh, you know i think there is there are certainly some people who think that way um so it is it is quite an odd thing a, a, a distinct vote of no confidence obviously in a democratic you know dispensation in a party that's that's uh, committed itself to a democratic process. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it is it is a sign of the, I think the level of mistrust that is now enjoyed by the ANC that so many South Africans don't even you know accept that they would abide by the very very basic rules of the of the democratic game. Um, and I think I mean Sarah's point is absolutely right. You know, the, you put put things into perspective. Daily life is the crisis. Um, it's murders. It's you know women can't. Uh, I was just looking at this morning. At, I think two s stories involving women who are completely you know in cities uh, just going about their lives ended up being raped and and, and strangled and you know and so on. It's just it's just shocking it and it's just really part of the, the kind of daily fabric of things. Um, and this is the society that that um, our government has tolerated. Uh, there were two stories that I think I shared in our, our sort of WhatsApp groups um, earlier this week about one was about police seeming uh, indifference. Uh, abusing, um, uh, beating up uh, in immigrant business people here in Cape Town. There was the other one about the the NHI, NHS um, surgeon from Britain who was out here on holiday with his family, who'd been shot uh, after being directed actually off the main road during the taxi strike. I mean, all these things, you know, the, 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 the crisis occurs at the nexus of all these problems that we know we talk about every day. And he'd been, um, you know, directed into Yanga, was shot in the face was still alive and the, and the family were begging the police to help you know, obviously these are tourists who just arrived in Cape Town, don't know where the hospitals are and they, and they described the police just being quite indifferent, standing aside, chatting and just saying to them, look you must take him to hospital you know, we can't take him that's symptomatic I think of exactly what, what Sari is saying this is, you know, this is daily life, this is the terrible state that the country has got into um, and part of that, I think, is that so many people just don't trust the government anymore. It's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> man, we don't trust them, man. <laughs> we don't trust them. We don't trust them, man. You know, you know that thing of Jacob Zuma, man. When Jacob Zuma was arrested, man, you know when those people were destroying infrastructure, man, you know, it showed you, man, that... South Africans, especially black people in this country, man, we are willing to sacrifice our own lives to please to please the politicians. We will literally destroy our own lives to please politicians. This is what is we saw this with Jacob Zuma. We saw this. Black people, they didn't care when they went into those malls. They didn't care when they were destroying infrastructure that majority of the people that were going to lose their jobs as a result of this is black people they didn't care about that they simply wanted to protect the politicians this is where we are in this country man so if you think that if the ANC lose power then they are simply going to step out of the way man I don't know how I feel about that guys so according to you guys according to you this is my question to you guys do you think the ANC will step out of power if they are voted out in 2024 tell me what you think on the comment section don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part subscribe 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 my name is thomas mabas so i will see you next time bye bye